Hey everyone, welcome to the weekly media briefing for the COVID-19 incident. I'm Carrie Schutte. I'm a spokesperson for the Shasta County Health and Human Services Agency. Um, I'll start like we always do with our numbers. We have in Shasta County as of June 16th, we have 51 confirmed cases, including none from yesterday. We've done 7,435 tests. We have two people in isolation, 43 on quarantine. We have had four deaths and there are currently no people hospitalized in Shasta County as of last night. Um, I wanted to uh, point out that we also have on the screen right now the new um, guidance that or the new um, allowable businesses. The green is getting much, much, much bigger and the red is getting much, much smaller. You can find that on um, ShastaReady.org, but we've added quite a number of things in the past week, um, including we've got some guidance for athletic practices. Um, we've added um, esthetician, skin care, cosmetology, and electrolysis services, um, massage therapy, libraries are allowed to open in person, uh, movie theaters, a variety of different things are, are now allowed, including um, nail salons and some of those personal services that had not been allowed up until, um, until last week. So um, that said, I would love to introduce um, the folks who are here with us today to answer media questions. Um, we have Cindy Bergstrom from Mercy Medical Center, Mark Mitchelson from Shasta Regional Medical Center, Jennifer Andrea from Mountain Valleys, and um, we've got Dr. Karen Ramstrom, the health officer for Shasta County, Donnell Ewart, the director of the Health and Human Services Agency, and Matt Pontus, the CEO of Shasta County. Um, do any of you have updates that you would like to share? Well, I can start. Hi, Cindy. Um, thank you for having me today. First and foremost, I think our most exciting thing right now is that we've been able to update our visitor uh, guidelines for our facility. We're now allowing, allowing one visitor per patient. We realize what a uh, benefit towards patient healing, having family members, loved, member, loved ones uh, with you is. So um, it's important to note that every visitor will be screened upon entry for temperature and symptoms, and we do ask that every visitor wear a mask the entire time that they're in the facility, and please do not visit if you are feeling ill. We do continue to monitor our levels of personal protective equipment just to make sure we are prepared for anything that might come our way. And in addition to that, our surgical volume is continuing to maintain a very healthy pace. Every single one of those patients are tested prior to surgery to ensure that we don't introduce uh, a negative component to the facility. So that's pretty much the crux of what's going on over here. Great, thank you, Cindy. Um, anybody else? Hey, Carrie, it's Matt Pontus. I just wanna say uh, oh, wow. that great news to hear from Cindy over there at Mercy. And uh, I know everybody's gonna be really excited about that. And also, it's great to see that big green rectangle there on all the businesses and sectors that are open now. It's just really good news for our community. And uh, I think your team just needs to be commended for all the hard work to give guidance to those different areas and uh, uh, find ways in which they can be safe and open up. And I'm just excited to see all that green. So thank you. Yes, thank you, Matt, as are we. Excited to see things getting back to a little bit closer to what they used to look like. And we have a quick update. Um, we are offering okay. drive up testing tomorrow in partnership with Shasta County Health and Human Services at our Bernie Health Clinic in Eastern, Eastern Shasta County. Um, we're offering that tomorrow from 10 to 12. And then we're also offering it at our Fall River Clinic the following Thursday from 10 to 12 as well. So if anybody's interested in Eastern Shasta County to get tested, we are offering that in partnership with our, our um, Shasta County Health and Human Services Agency. Yes, thank you for that very important update. We're really, um, really excited about that much need. This is Donnell and I am also grateful that the uh, green part of the chart below is getting larger. I do think it's important to reiterate that uh, gatherings are still not allowed other than for protests or faith communities. And this is quite important because our we want to keep our businesses open. We want to be able to 
have commerce happening. We want people to be able to work. But if we go back to the way we were before, normal, as we call it, right now, we're going to have a lot of disease transmission and that's going to threaten our businesses. So uh, we, we have several core messages, I think. One is stay home if you're sick, stay home if you're vulnerable. If you're gonna go out to any of those uh, businesses in the green box, please wear a face covering and uh, please get tested. Our uh, tests are free at our Shasta College site and in Eastern Shasta County, you just heard there's gonna be testing available there. So those are the things that every person can do to help us maintain control over this outbreak. Thank you, Donnell. I think we're ready to go to you, Karen. Dr. Ramstrom has some things to share. Okay, thank you, Carrie. Um, so if we're done with this, um, showing this, yeah, that's great. Thanks, Mark. We can just scroll down so we can see the COVID alert level. That would be great. So um, we did want to let folks know we gave a little preview of this. Um, I uh, mentioned this was coming last week, I believe, and um, wanted to uh, show it to you today. It's front and center there, easy to get to on our um, Shasta Ready website. And um, this is a tool that we're hoping will keep the community, businesses, and other sectors informed, just how we're doing in Shasta County, so that individuals um, and those other entities can make decisions about how they might um, go out and about and deliver services and such. So um, the way this is um, this works is the COVID alert level overall is um, kind of an aggregate of uh, seven indicators across three different categories. Um, and those categories include disease status that measures things including case rates and COVID deaths. The healthcare system looks at our hospitalizations and our ICU numbers. And then disease control has a variety of measures, including um, impact on um, healthcare workers, um, our congregate settings, and it also includes test positivity rate. Um, and I mentioned, I think that indicator before, and the test positivity rate um, is important because it helps us to know if we're testing enough people to pick up asymptomatic um, cases. And so as Donnell uh, just mentioned, we do encourage people who are um, particularly if you're um, working in contact with the public um, or um, have uh, attended some sort of a, an event or a space where you feel like you might have been exposed, we encourage people to regularly get tested um, at those locations that were mentioned. Um, there's more detail on our website about the COVID alert level um, for those who are interested. Um, and happy to take questions on that, but I also thought I would show you our current epi curve. Um, so we can maybe do that and come back to this if we need to. If you can scroll down, Mark. So um, this is also um, updated daily on our website. And so what we wanted to show here, you can see the, the in the middle of the screen, there are confirmed COVID-19 cases by day. Um, this is this is these are the cases across Northern California, so in Shasta County as well as surrounding counties. So it gives you a a, a picture of what's going on not not only here but um, in uh, areas near us. Um, and as you can see, as more um, sectors have opened up, we do have um, additional disease transmission occurring, which is not um, unexpected. Um, but we do hope that this stays at a level where we can contain it. Um, as um, the COVID alert level indicates our yellow. Um, the idea is that we kind of keep it at that um, level where we can actually do um, isolation and quarantine, contact tracing, um, and we have the capacity to do that and don't overwhelm our hospital system. And so we expect that, that these numbers will go up, but we don't want to see them continuing to go, go up. We might just maintain, um, we're hoping, um, We'll see how this goes over time, but there is some concerning um, numbers in surrounding areas, so we wanted to alert folks to that. Thank you, Mark. All right, thank you, Dr. Ramstrom. Um, I think we are ready for media questions. Uh, Ms. Judy, uh, can I ask a question off the bat? This is Ethan Hansen, uh, the record. Like, 
All right. Um, how are you guys doing? So I just wanted to say, first of all, thank you uh, so much for having this vehicle available. Um, so the CIF just recently uh, re released guidelines on how on how uh, county health officials, um, how they feel county health officials should be moving forward uh, as high school sports is being reintroduced and they re uh, released a day deadline of July 20th when they're going to do uh, implementation. That being said, they have made it clear that it's ultimately in the hands of county health officials to decide what happens moving forward with high school sports. So could you address that? Do we have any updates and anything that you can add from our previous discussion uh, two weeks ago? So I'm, I'm happy to address that. So um, thank you for that question. We um, actually have um, guidance for athletic practices on our website now. Um, um, in addition to that, we know that the Shasta County Office of Education is working really, really um, uh, diligently right now with the schools and superintendents to apply the um, California Department of Public Health guidance for schools to prepare for um, their reopening. And so that also includes some additional information um, in, the, in what will be coming out um, and how the schools will manage that. Um, but the athletic practice guidance is up and um, can be used now. It's on the Shasta Ready website. So, so the Shasta writing website um, is. Do you have like a specific um, link that you could possibly uh, share in in a chat or or anything? Or if you go to shastaready.org, okay. click on a not to recovery link. There's a big list of the things. That if you if you expand the link that says what is open now. You can, you'll see athletic guidelines is alphabetically first, so it should be pretty easy to find. But if you can't find it, let me. Okay, Sorry. then I'll then I'll ask you. Sure, that 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 that's all I want. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, and uh, I now yield my time. <laughs> Other questions. Uh, yes, I, I have a question. Um, as uh, we see these spikes in some some surrounding counties, what sort of increase in case numbers would we have to see here to see the process of openings go backwards? And would any enforcement be considered on those closures? So we're hoping we don't get to that point. So that's why we are encouraging people right now to do everything that they can to do their part to make sure that we keep this in a manageable level. And that that's you know all of our all of our um, role uh, in this opening. Um, so if we're out at the grocery store, if we're at the pharmacy, if we go to our favorite restaurant, if we're going to the movies, wherever it might be, there's guidance in place to ensure that that's done in a safe manner. Um, whether you're going to your doctor's office, um, what have you, and so. Um, we uh, we want to just remind people, as was mentioned earlier, you know, when you go into those those areas, if you can't physically distance at least six feet, we uh, strongly recommend that you wear a face covering while you're in those sorts of settings, um, and uh, make sure that you're staying home if you're sick and avoiding people who are who are ill. Um, we know that can be challenging sometimes because we all have our um, responsibilities and commitments to family. Um, so doing your best to try and see if you are sick, that you know if there's someone else who could pitch in. Um, so it's all of those things together that we we all need to be very diligent uh, diligent about right now. Not waiting, not waiting to see these numbers go up further. Um, we want to uh, make sure that our businesses are able to stay open and all of these other sectors that we all um, enjoy and are happy to get back to. Uh, we want to make sure that that they, they are able to um, um, keep doing what they're doing as well. And so. This is the time for all of us to um, start getting in the habit of those those new behaviors um, as these entities are implementing it in the way that they're doing their their businesses and practices. I'm sure that you're witnessing what we're I mean, sure, we're all seeing the same thing that in places like Costco, where they require masks, everybody's wearing a mask, but in other stores where they don't require them, um, the majority of customers are not wearing any face coverings. Um, we as the press can try to push the message as much as we can, but what else can be done? Uh, 
Um, we are, there's a couple things. One, I think um, it's important for all businesses in various sectors as they are opening to make sure that they're paying attention and adhering to the state guidance. And so many of those do include um, use of cloth um, or other face coverings, depending on the type of setting. Um, and uh, we're also putting together some updated um, recommendations um, in terms of mask and face covering use that we're um, hoping to get on our website by the end of the week. And uh, we encourage people to look at that. It has the latest information. And um, um, really the recommendation is if you are out and about and you cannot ensure physical distancing that you actually wear um, a cloth face covering um, for normal day-to-day -day activities. Um, so, um, that, and that hasn't changed. Um, and we also encourage people to become familiar with what the recommendations are in these different sectors. And so um, if, if it's not clear to you, you can look at the guidance online or you can ask um, the, the business what their plan is and they should be able to share that with you. Uh, many of them have done a lot of work to ensure that their, their businesses and these other venues are a safe place for all of us to go. Other questions? Yeah, um, back here. Um, so um, thank you, thank you again. I, I just found found the guidelines. So I wanted to ask now, as far as a timetable, um, when can uh, when can we expect to see when a decision will be made whether or not uh, fall sports will be able to return to having competitions, to having uh, football games on Fridays? Um, are you guys following in line with, with CIF as far as that July 20th, as far as the plans, or are there separate plans from, um, from, from, uh, from Chester County compared to CIF? Um, I guess what I could say is a lot of those guidance documents are for planning purposes, so it's nice to know that those are out. Um, when we were developing our guidance, it wasn't, it wasn't available yet, so we'll take a look at that. Um, and so I'm sure that those are for planning purposes and that date has not come yet. And so we really would need to wait and see what's happening at that time to see what the safest um, approach is for those young people and whether that's something that we would recommend that they engage in or not at that time. Thank you, Dr. Ramstrom. That's all I have. Thank you. Yeah, I have a question. Um, I got distracted when, um, after Cindy talked about the, the Mercy's updated visitor guidelines, the, Mark, did, at SRMC, do you have updated visitor guidelines? So I guess that's kind of uh, nice, the fact that we share the infectious disease doctors between the two facilities. So we actually have the exact same guidelines and they've come out around the exact same time. So uh, very much what Cindy was saying, the uh, one visitor being allowed, being the dedicated a spokesperson for the rest of the family. Uh, everybody gets screened when they come into the hospital. Everybody's still being funneled through the main entrances. So really like for like what each facility is doing or doing the same thing. All right, thanks. Any other questions this morning? Well, I'll, I'll have another one. Um, I see in the, okay. the green zone there, uh, lodging and short-term rentals are in there. Um, can you say how long that's been allowed to open? Because I thought lodging was always okay under certain guidelines. And then the second part question is, um, are, can you highlight any important details for like short-term rentals? I can address that unless anyone else wants to. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> Uh, so you are absolutely correct. So lodging has been available for essential um, types of activities um, all along. So you, you, that is absolutely true. What was recently added, um, and I believe it was um, not this last Friday, but the Friday before, was um, lodging and these rentals for, um, for non-essential types of activities. Um, at the same time, the recommendation by the state continues to be that um, that we, um, unless it's essential, that we try to stay closer to home and that we um, avoid traveling long distances from where we live um, in order to prevent um, bringing um, the um, coronavirus back to our communities. And so the practices that are in these um, guidance documents are, are similar to what 
or in the others in terms of um, a lot of environmental cleaning recommendations. Um, and um, I would say that that's probably one of the, the main things in terms of guidance for those types of facilities as far as what they need to do to ensure that their spaces are safe. Okay, thanks. Uh, Dr. Ramstrom, uh, the if live theater is uh, allowed with modifications through the variants, would that uh, would that do you think that would be with um, the modifications that apply to movie theaters with the twenty five percent of the house allowed? You're asking when it does become allowed. Yes. Yes, if if that if live theater uh, falls under the one of those allowed with modifications under the variance um, anytime soon, uh, Riverfront Playhouse, for example, would do you think that would be with the twenty five percent, like uh, as movie theaters are? Uh, you know, I, 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 that makes sense to me. There may also be some um, some requirements in terms of where you position people um, relative to the actors. Um, that, that yeah, that was that was I was wondering about that too. If it was for the protection of the performers or of the audience, and and if it, it was, and if go ahead, I'm sorry. Yep, it's okay. Go go on. Um, so that's so that's with the the uh, the the performers, the stage performers, uh, in mind. Then is that correct? Yeah, I think I think it would be for both because, you know, you, it goes both directions. And so, um, you know, I have not seen any preview or heard any conversations about what that might look like. And so I, I can't really um, speculate further, but I, I can imagine that there would be requirements for for um, both. OK, thanks. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, there in the not allowed theme parks, would Waterworks Park be defined under that? So there's other guidance that, um, um, and it, it, it's, you know, I think it's important to know that there's not always the exact type of guidance for every type of entity. And there is, there are a couple guidance documents that actually apply to Waterworks Park. And we've been working closely with them to implement those practices. Um, you know, it's, I think it's a learning curve for all of these entities, but there are some existing um, guidance that applies to those pools and some of their other components there. Um, such as they have some restaurants, they have some you know food facilities, that kind of a thing. Um, the pools is a big one. Um, so there's a couple of different family entertainment. I think we've drawn from a number of different guidance documents to assist them. Yeah, I was just wondering if it would be the theme parks there on the right or the family entertainment centers there on the left, because well, that would make a big difference for them, I guess. Thanks. Going back to the question about live performances, um, movie theaters are have the advantage of that no one's talking and everyone's facing the same direction. When you have a live performance, now you have people facing one another and somebody's either talking or singing or doing something um, at facing the other people. So it is more risky, and that is why you know it is in a future stage while the movie theaters are allowed to open in the current stage. Any other questions? Concerning the sports, is there any distinction between different types of sports? Like, uh, obviously, some would involve more more contact than others. I mean, like basketball, that's very close and very uh, would seem like it would be have more of a potential of 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 interaction or contract contracting something than, say, baseball. Um, is there any distinction under these definitions of different sports? Yeah, I think contact sports are definitely not recommended at this time. We have the CIF guidelines. Our website. Um, if you go to the roadmap to recovery page, what is open? There's the athletic guidelines, but we also uploaded the CIF guidelines. I looked at those this morning, and they do differentiate between different types of sports. So we would encourage you to take a look at at those guidance. Those guidelines it'll it'll explain a little bit better um, detail what types of things are allowed and how. 
Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Going once, going twice. Um, this is Daisy oh, with Chan. Good morning, everyone. Um, so I did have some technical difficulties at the beginning of the meeting, so I apologize if you guys already um, stated the answer to my question. Um, but so the city of Corning partnered up with Tehama County Public Health with water waste testing. Is this something that you guys are considering here in the near future? Yeah, we've been actually looking into that for uh, for a while now. And um, when that initially started, there was a company um, that was working with a variety of entities nationwide, and it was um, more readily available for a period of time. And so we're looking into the to the um, option of doing that and and how we might be able to go about that. Um, but we have not begun that yet. That's an interesting question. What would be the benefit of wastewater testing to try to narrow down to a certain sector, a certain area where it's concentrated or, and, and I, I assume that's pre process, pre uh, um, uh, treatment rather than post treatment, right? I mean, I mean, what would be the reason to do something like that? Yeah, I, I've heard um, some of the other um, counties talking about this, and I, I think there's there's value in actually monitoring that to see if you might have more um, um, transmission than you might be detecting. And so um, I think it, it can be helpful as kind of uh, we're going up, we're going back down, and then monitoring it, particularly when we're in a lull to see if we see an uptick. There's some uh, algorithms that are taken into account to measure that amount of nucleic acid in there and um, how that correlates with disease transmission. And so there's a lot of, um, I think, research going ongoing about that and how to use it um, and how how it um, can be applied. Um, CDC is actually doing some of that um, information gathering right now. So I think we're going to learn more over time about how how that information can be um, used for monitoring what's going on in a community. All right. Any other questions this morning? Hearing none. Thank you everyone for being here today. We will be um, back next Wednesday at 11 a.m. Um, and you can uh, keep track of what's going on at ShastaReady.org. And you can all of, also follow us on Facebook, Shasta County Health and Human Services Agency, for our daily updates and all kinds of other good information. Thank you all very much and enjoy the rest of your day.